ابتدایی یه فرصت خوب حالا پشت مدافع خدا داد عزیزی توی دروازه گل گل برای ایران خدا داد عزیزی پاس هم روی زمین یک به سردار آسمون به توی دروازه سردار آسمون گل به نام آسمون به برای ایران بزنه کریم ازداری فرد گل توی هرگزه کریم ازداری فرد در بازه پرتفال باز شد علی دایی سامه تو توی هرگزه حرکت کوچان نجات فرصت برای کوچان نجات توی دروازه گل برای ایران Hello and welcome to Golbazan podcast my name is Ari Alavedi today we're really pleased to be uh, covering the uh, Women's Asian Cup 2022 that's going to be held in India um, Iran plays their first game against India on the 20th of uh, January um, I'm really pleased today to be joined by uh, two friends of the podcast, Katalin Khosroyar, former Iran U19 uh, national team head coach, and also Sahar from Tupotak uh, on YouTube, who I was recently uh, on. Uh, how are you both doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you for inviting uh, two women who are striving to do their absolute best and giving the world better recognition about Iranian women's football. Um, thank you, Arya John. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, thanks uh, for this opportunity. It's, it's a great thing to talk about AFC and uh, Women's Asian Cup. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, first at question I want to ask is actually to Kat. You obviously used to play for the Iranian national team. Um, how much has does that team that you played uh, in change to the one today? Fortunately, we, there are still some players from uh, back whenever I was a player playing and they are the, you know, the, they're the leading forces of the national team. And we have now exceptional young players from whenever I was the head coach of the under 19 national team. Overall, it's a pretty strong mix and uh, you're gonna see some very talented players. And uh, overall, I think uh, there's gonna be a, a good mix of the older players with the, the youth players. Excellent. Hopefully, uh, obviously, some of the young players that we are seeing uh, in this team can perform in this tournament. Um, Sarah, coming to you, um, obviously, the preparation for this competition hasn't been great. We've not had, uh, I think, many friendlies or any at all, to be honest. Um, how can that lack of preparation affect uh, this team uh, coming up in this tournament? Yeah, I want to talk about Group A uh, friendlies and the preparation they've had ha- they've had so far. Um, so um, starting with India, we've got a game on Thursday with them, and they have had sixteen games this year compared to Iran, and they've had six, which three of them were against Uzbekistan, which I find is strange. Like there were three games in June and uh, two in August, all uh, against Uzbekistan, and then we had one in June with Belarus. Um, which we lost six you nil, know, and uh, China has got five, which comes after us, and then Ta- China, China, Chinese Taipei has um, three games, and then they only had one friendly. The rest was just the quali- qualifiers. Um, well, I mean, comparing it to China, uh, well, we had more games, but uh, considering that uh, they were all against Uzbekistan, um, unfortunately, we didn't have them. Um, enough games to you know, prepare the team. Um, and also this is our first time in AFC uh, Women's Asian Cup. So um, I'm sure, I mean, I believe in all the, uh, uh, the players and uh, I know that they're one of the best, but um, the fact that it's the first uh, competition uh, that they're doing and um, you know, the pressure mentally, um, it could be a bit, maybe, maybe it could be a bit difficult for them. Yeah, you mentioned, obviously, it's the first time Iran has qualified to the Women's Asian Cup. Uh, Kat, Mariam Mari Irandus, uh, the national team head coach, is a friend of yours. How can she uh, motivate these um, these women to, to perform at this uh, competition? Well, if there's one thing that uh, Coach Irandus does not lack is her motivational skills in you know prepping the players mentally, psychologically and emotionally to be able to come out um, strong from this tournament. 
She's done a wonderful job uh, via her social media channels, uh, via uh, pushing uh, broadcast journalists, journal um, like newspapers, magazines, you name it, even celebrities to uh, start supporting uh, the, the national women's team. And, uh, you know, she's, she's come a very long way on putting Iran women's football on the map, as well as, you know, gaining momentum uh, within the country as well from people you would have never expect to know about the Iran women's national team. And uh, it's been a hot topic for the past nine months. And, you know, she's, she's definitely done a great job in bringing all her forces and energy together to get the girls ready um, psychologically. Yeah, and you know, she, you know, I think ultimately this shows that she's shown, I think, a lot more uh, that this team needs a, a real leader, uh, and I think she's shown that, you know, especially with the the, the issues that, that have been uh, surrounding the national team in the last couple of months with Zohra Kodai, who we had you on to speak about, um, Kat, and it was obviously a bit of a controversy that shouldn't have happened. You know, it shouldn't have happened. It, sh it was a ridiculous um, claim by the Jordanian FA. How can Zohra, um, uh, you know, show herself in this tournament? By continuing doing what she does best, her saving goals, saving penalties, and being a force of nature on the team. Uh, whenever I was a teammate of Zohra, you know, we, we would always have, you know, our little pep talks before, and she's the one that you know, brings the, the entire team together. But uh, out of everyone on the team, Zohre is really ready to kill it this tournament because of, uh, you know, what happened to her unjustly a few months ago. And she wants to prove herself and, you know, make her mark as one of the best goalkeepers of Asia. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sahar, coming to you, um, what do you expect from this team at this tournament? As um, Kad mentioned, Maria Mirandos, I mean, I've been following the team uh, on uh, social media and um, um, lots of exposure, lots of, you know, uh, pe pe lots of people uh, talking about it and sort of uh, the, the coach as well, motivating them and putting videos up. And um, they have, they are very motivated and they want to prove that th they have done a lot of work and they uh, want to, do their best and so I, I i really can't say because honestly i don't i'm i do think that um they, they can there they would be good results i'm sure i mean i don't know about india it's a bit scary but i think uh the rest of the games we can see really good results yeah as you mentioned uh, iran are playing against india china and chinese taipei you know for sure they're going to be Credible, credible opponents who will be there to compete, um, you know, and, and I think it's going to be tough for, for Iran for sure. I think it could be a good challenge for them. Uh, I yeah, think it's, it's, you know. Yeah, it's India's 10th time being in the AFC, the, the Cups. And they're more experienced than the Iranian national team in, in this tournament. This is our first time. And I think, as I said, I think it's a, it's a real challenge, challenge for them. But I think it's important that we we go there with a, with a confidence that we're, you know, we've qualified and we have the right to be there. You know, I think uh, if the, the the team can do that, uh, you know, I believe they've, they've got every potential. And there's, there's very good players in this team. So I want to, uh, Kat, I want to speak, ask you about the, some of the individual players. Behnaz uh, Tarekhani is the captain. And um, what can you tell us about her leadership uh, on the pitch and off the pitch? You know, Bechna's off the pitch is your silly girl that jokes around all the time. And, uh, you know, she's just so much fun to be around. But on the field, she's a beast. And she definitely has the capability and ability to, you know, make sure the team is on the right track. Um, so, for example, if a team is down 1-0, she's not the type that's going to yell and argue with you or, uh, you know, pinpoint players out to blame them she's going to say to everyone you know brush it off it's zero zero we need to keep fighting and pushing uh, she has a very unusual character because um, you know when you look at her uh, you can't tell if she's happy or mad and this is actually the beauty of, of Behnaz but uh, you know overall she's a, such a strong leader and I think uh, coach Iran just uh, chose the the best captain for this tournament and, you know, overall, uh, if you ever want to get to know Behnaz, um, she, she loves really, uh, she loves rap, Iranian rap music. And uh, she can probably sing for you verse by verse every rap song uh, that has ever been made in Iran. And uh, <laughs> overall, great leader on the field and also um, 
great human off the field too. Fantastic. That's what you want to hear uh, about your captain. Um, the goals for Iran, uh, Zahra uh, Gambari and uh, Hajar Dabagi. Zahra to... Gambari is not joining the national team. Yeah. Okay. I think there uh, was a last minute uh, pull out from the tournament due to unforeseeable circumstances. All right. But uh, Hajar Dabagi, young player, looks really talented. What can you tell us about her? So it will be um, Haja and Negin Zandi who will be right. the, the forwards. Negin Zandi as well, very, very young player. Um, but she is um, you know, a force to reckon with, uh, very fast, uh, beautiful technique on the ball at a high pace. And Haja the same, but Haja obviously has a lot more experience than Negin Zandi. But whenever they did play together, they, they do create magic up top and are able to create some great open spaces. And if you do give them a, a through ball, there is no way you can stop them. Uh, these two, what they have to watch out for the most is that most likely the center backs of the opponent, opponent team, opponent's team, sorry, uh, they will be man-to-man -man marking or cutting off their space. So they do have to be able to read that, get, read that so they can find an open space. And especially if there's a, a good cross coming in from the sides or from the wings, uh, they should make some pretty clever movements to to get the ball back of the net. Okay, let's go to a different segment in the podcast. We have an interview that Samson, one of our editors, uh, did with uh, the two the Royal Paravar sisters, Kimya and Vida, who obviously were hoping to, to be part of this squad for the Asian Cup, currently playing for Vanderbilt University. Uh, let's go to the interview just now. All right, thanks, guys, and thank you again for listening to Go Bazan on this uh, special bonus episode previewing the 2022 Women's Asian Cup. Iran, of course, making their debut. And I have with me experienced players both in American college soccer as well as the Iran U19 national team when they faced off against Asian competition playing for Kat Postrayar. I have with me Kimya and Vida Raya Parvar. Guys, welcome again. Thank you for, thank having, you for us. having us. For those who are maybe a little bit new to us, I interviewed uh, these two players. Uh, they play in NCAA Division I in the Southeastern Conference, uh, for those who aren't familiar. Kimia helped lead Vanderbilt to an SEC Tournament Championship. If you haven't listened to my interview with them, I believe that was December of 2020. Kimia, you uh, just finished off your junior season, and you had Vita join you as a freshman. It's not something new for us. We've always been together. Um, but it was something a little different because we always had to compete every single day. And I think it was just a little bit more fun because you had your sister to always compete against and you always have someone who can help support you and just back you up in every single day and every practice that you have. And, and Vita, your first, uh, you got, had a semester of preparation last spring and then in the fall. Uh, what was this process been like for you? you? I mean, usually freshmen, they come on, they're still new, but yeah, in your second semester. it's very up and down for me. My first two semesters were filled with a lot of injury and like a lot of learning, you know, coming off, pulling my hamstring, my ankle, got a concussion, you know, a lot of injuries that prohibit you, especially during season, like you need to be tip top shape. And I think the biggest thing with like college soccer is like, for me at least is like what, the new being in shape is especially in the sec where it's a lot of running and a lot of being physical so that some those two semesters for me especially last semester was what just like a learning experience you know how to prepare after injuries and how to get back in shape and how to change your style from playing a bunch of technical asian teams to teams who are reliant on their speed and their strength in the sec now kimya uh your experience of vanderbilt it was your third year this past year uh, it's a little bit of an up and down year as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, can you explain to me how that went for you? So I got injured pretty early in the season. I think, what has it been? It's been like, I think I got injured in September. Is that fair? September. And I'm still kind of recovering from that. It's been like five months since I even touched a ball. But I think the past with COVID and everything, it's really impacted not just our um physical side and you have to be fit all the time for soccer and that kind of drains you but also the mental side of having not being able to be with your family a lot and having that um, like social connection between each other and the team it kind of like drained us a little bit and having three semesters of that back to back um, it kind of 
I would say personally kind of impacted the way that I played this um, semester and it probably directly influenced my injury and my progress. So, but I mean, sometimes you have an off season. That's what, that's what life is. You kind of just get down. You have to find your way back up. So meanwhile, the team of the women's have reached the high point of their time uh, on the international stage. لولا المصري لولا المصري خلاص وانتهت الحكاية لمصلحة منتخب إيران المنتخب الإيراني يتأهل إلى أمم آسيا على حساب منتخب النشميات هم مجرون بكل صراحة. Defeating number 63 ranked in the world Jordan on penalty kicks in September that won their group and qualified Iran for the 2022 Asian Cup where they will be facing the host nation, India, ranked number 55 in the world. And then three days later, China, number 19 in the world, the uh, 1999 World Cup runner-ups. And then three days after that, they have to gear up uh, in the final game for number 39 in the world, Taiwan. And just for comparison, Thailand, who were at the 2019 World Cup, are ranked number 38. Uh, so Iran is definitely the newcomers, uh, in every way, every shape and form for this tournament. And there are a couple questions on whether or not Iran could bring in some of the Iranian American talent, but guys, it sounds like these injury problems uh, came out at a, kind of a bad time. Can you kind of a, expand for me and for our listeners uh, what the process was like? Was there any dialogue? Just what went on? For me, uh, I did recently come out of con- a concussion, but I would think for me, um, it was more the reason why we didn't, I didn't go specifically was to like my own personal reasons that I, my relationship with soccer and just how the season went and just relationship with fitness and all that stuff. It was really not very good. And I didn't think I was in a good place to go to Asian cup at that th- time. I didn't think I was going to contribute in a very good way. And I, I wanted to put myself over my sport the sport that I really love and I think that it was a very hard decision especially someone who knows that this is an amazing opportunity but that's the decision that I made and I I wouldn't take that decision back because how much I've progressed just with that break I would say I'm in a lot better place than I was before when I had this opportunity. How bad was that concussion? A lot of a lot of people who don't have extensive uh, careers or played at a very high level understand what you uh, might go through with that process? It was partially the concussion. The concussion played a lot of part, like a huge part in it as well, just because I wasn't playing soccer and it's just, um, but basically it's you're in your own little space and you, some days you just wake up and you're just not a hundred percent. You just feel like 75% and there's nothing that you can do about it. And that can last for weeks on end. And you feel like you're going crazy. Cause you're like, I don't feel good. I, I don't, I, I can't walk straight. My eyes are blurry. I, I don't like, I, you just not yourself. And that's basically, it's no medicine can cure that. And Kimya, what were some of the obstacles for you? You touched on, you got injured in September. I believe that shut out the rest of, of your season. Is that right? Yeah. So I, um, in our first SEC game, I sprained my MCL pretty bad. At first I thought it was, they told me it would be like, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. But as it progressed and with like x-rays and all that stuff, um, they found it was, it was like I could have almost had surgery on it. Um, it was quite a bad sprain. It was almost torn to the bone. Um, so like something like that, um, it doesn't just come back in two weeks. It, it takes a lot of time to heal. And um, MCL is I, I tore my ACL four years ago. And the process for my ACL was way quicker than my MCL, which is unfortunate. So MCL is kind of tricky. Um, and I, this is not something I planned because me and Vita throughout this whole thing, we had con- constant communication between, obviously with my dad to like translate, but um, we had constant communication with the head coach and we were like, we're going to come to the camp in December and we're going to be able to be fit and ready and play in the Asian Cup. And then this kind of happened and it detoured everything that was all our plans essentially and we wanted to come somehow some way just didn't eight end, weeks yeah, so it didn't end up happening, it didn't end up happening unfortunately um and also I have some heart problems as well which is not like a big deal but I've had a couple 
I've had two surgeries so far and that during that time I had to step away from that as well to deal with. Just to ask two women's college players to fly across the world if they're 110% healthy and ready to go. It's a whole nother ball game when you have the issues that y'all dealt with. So that, that sounds like uh, the, the, the team and the fans, it sounds like a downer for them. But looking forward. I think one, when we say off season, it's, it's funny because off season for us, is like, we're still not even off. You know, it's even more running. It's even more weightlifting. It's even more preparing for the last six games that we have in the spring. So off season is never off season. And so it feels like this reoccurring thing of just going over and over and over and like, when is there going to be a point where you just get to relax? And so I think it's just finding a, a middle of just, it's okay not to think about soccer for a week. It's fine to take off days. It's fine to rest. It's fine to think about your mental health when it comes to soccer, if you want your relationship with the sport and to do well in it to last for as long as you can. And I think that's a lot of things that are not spoken about. And I think that's a lot of things with college soccer that pushes these athletes away from pursuing professional or taking their career because they're just so burnt out. So back to the 2022 Asian Cup, uh, of the players that are in it, how many of them uh, did you play with? What should Iranian fans know about this team or just the, the program of Iranian women's uh, football making this tournament? We don't know many players. Um, we obviously, we know a couple. We know like four or five. Yeah, we know Melika, we know Golnush, and we know a lot of the people that were on the U19 team with us at the time. We didn't know, we met we didn't meet the seniors. We played against them one time in a scrimmage, but that was it. But from the foundation that was created um, in the U19 camp, we, you know, a person like Melika and Golnush and like just their work ethic, I think is something to be not, not to underestimate them when it comes to the Asian cup. I think that it was people considered it impossible for Iran to qualify for the Asian cup. And now look at, we look where we are. So it's not, I don't think, I think the culture speaks for itself and how they're pushing and they're progressing. And so I don't think it should be taken lightly. And I also think that we have a lot of youth that is very, very good with what we have, with what they've dealt through. And I, I don't know if they're at the national team caliber yet, but they're definitely getting there. And I think not just this year, I think just the Asian cup is a stepping stone to bringing that talent in onto the national team so that there's even more progress than what is happening right now. Because when we were with the U19, we were a great team, but the teams that were better than us were not the teams of our same age, but the the Iranian teams that were younger than us, the youth. And so I think that like it is for everyone, but even for Iran, it's just the youth keep getting better and better. And that's what we're hoping for Iranian national team. If you're listening to us in the United States, or if you got a VPN for the United States, you will be able to stream these matches on Paramount Plus, just like for the men's qualification matches. Uh, Last question, uh, Kimia and Vida, what circumstances would bring y'all back to playing for the Team Ali women? For me, it's just, you know, fixing myself, basically. I don't, I think Team Ali has done a great job and I think there's nothing that more that they can do with coach cat and the, and the head coaches and the communication there's nothing more that they can do to get us back on the team and we always say that we are part of team Melly, regardless of like who asks but um it's more of just sometimes focusing on our own relationships with soccer that we can then give our 100 percent to something bigger than us i think this is the same thing with me i think once i get i think it's for me it's a little bit more simple i think i just need to get over my injuries and from there the world there's all these possibilities that could happen um I'm definitely once I get fit I'm definitely definitely open to going back to team Eddie still a lot of hunger and unfinished business left for you you haven't yet had a chance at the senior national team no No. we did scrimmage against them and it was it was fun and we got to see like great players and we also scrimmaged the younger kids and it was also it was great but when watching their games it's like it's hunger that you can add something to the team and like help them in some sort of way and they can help you too I think we're also very competitive people so just getting to the next level like we started at the U19 we got invited to the U23 I think it's time to step up to the national team and we want to 
go to the next level. And I think that's the next level for us. Who won that scrimmage, by the way? I think with the, <laughs> <laughs> the seniors, I think they did win. I think it was a blowout. I'm not sure. I don't think it was a blowout. I think they did win. But with the youth, we we did win. They're, they're more experienced. They've been together longer. I was just hoping they would win, but... I, I mean, didn't we, like it. We helped. I mean, we got penalties. And... It was good, a good game. Yeah. Kimya and Vida, I can't thank you all enough for joining us uh, yet again on Go Bizan. And we definitely will have our eyes uh, this Thursday, Sunday, and then Wednesday for Team LA making their debut in the Asian Cup. Proud moment for women's football in Iran. And guys, uh, best of luck with uh, your recovery and your upcoming games in the spring, as well as in the fall for Vanderbilt University. Iranian fans will be cheering you on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're back uh, from that interview. I appreciate Samson for doing that. Um, last player I want to speak about is Melika Mohammadi, who obviously used to play in the United States for Emory Eagles in Atlanta, uh, defender. Um, what what can you say about her, Kat? I, uh, I mean, what can I... Where do I begin with her? She's I've coached her since she was 12 years old and, uh, you know, she's been progressing uh, through the football levels quite well. I am very impressed with the fact that she is now moved one line ahead as a holding center mid. And because of her experience as um, center back, she's able to you know defend as well as has the ability and freedom to, uh, you know, start the, the building out from the back quite cohesively. Um, also, very young player, has great experience, moved back to Iran to help prepare with the national team so she wouldn't miss any um, time with them. And, uh, you know, if she if she is, uh, you know, mentally strong and, uh, you know, ready to to kick butt in these games, there's no way that a an, there's no way the opponent can get past her. And she will be the reason why the build up from the back will be successful through her beautiful through passes or through. Um, her her plays with the, the other two sentiments, depending on the formation of the team. But overall, I'm very impressed with her and very excited to see her play in this tournament and see how much she's changed since last time I saw her play. Excellent. Uh, Sahar, you interviewed Fatima Qasimi quite recently on your uh, show, to Topotak, uh, with RD. Um, just tell us a little quickly about that conversation and uh, what her thoughts were on this team. Um, to be uh, very honest with you, we didn't uh, talk much about uh, this current team or anything. It was much, much more about her experience uh, with Team Meli. And, uh, well, uh, she scored over like 10, 10 goals for Team Meli. And uh, now she's in uh, Atasha here in Turkey. Um, and, uh, yeah, she was mostly talking about uh, how the situation is uh, with Tim Meli and, the and again, the preparation, the camps and everything. And But apparently, uh, from what the coach Yorondus uh, has said on media, uh, things are getting better, but um, we have to see if that's, uh, that's the case. I, I would like to add on to this yeah. as well, because Sarah is correct. We have to see... I mean, we, we went with the best that we could. We, we had camps, but we didn't have any games. And statistically speaking, you know, a team like India went all the way to Brazil, played against Brazil. They played against Costa Rica and Venezuela. They have um, immense amount of training. They had immense amount of training camps. Their new coach uh, is, a, is a big change maker. And then, you know, last time that China, uh, Taipei and India played, India did want, win 1-0. And uh, overall speaking, we are considered the underdogs based only because of our lack of friendly games. But I think with the, the ambitions and with the, the, the talent that the coaches were able to bring together, we do have a fighting chance. But we have to stay focused and confident because as we all know, uh, Iranian national team players work uh, more with their emotions. So if we can psychologically get the, the girls um, at a very at a very good level of confidence, um, you know, then we definitely will be a very hard comp- um, competitor. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the Indian national team. Uh, what can we expect from them? So there are, there are three players, Dalima Chibur, um, Andrew Tamang, and their captain, Ashalata Devi. These three are you know, the, the backbone of the team. Um, individually speaking, 
all of the players are very good. But one thing that India has shown us based off their performances with other with all their friendly matches is that they are a unit. They work together very beautifully and they have uh, memorized each other's movements. So it's going to be a tough competition, but it's nothing that Iran can't, um, you know, can't compete with. Uh, as far as uh, you know, China, Taipei, uh, they actually have not, they've had minimal friendly games. And um, based off of my conversation with uh, people um, from that country, they barely had camp. So um, I think if we are able to, you know, come out of these two games quite successful, our main competitor will be China and China being China, it's going to be a very difficult match, but um, I, I've seen I've seen miracles happen before, but I also know that the Iran national team has worked hard enough to be able to uh, compete strongly and uh, fiercely against these teams. Because, like I said, if we are emotionally um, con and if we're if we, if we have the confidence and if we're psychologically ready, no one can stand in our way. We just have to make sure that if we are down one zero, we do not lose mm -hmm. um, momentum. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, when we're speaking about, you know, this competition and, and where Iran can go uh, beyond this competition, um, what does what needs to be done to to develop this national team further in terms of, um, you know, if, if it's financially or infrastructurally, what needs to be done to really develop this national team to become a regular mainstay in, in this Asian Cup? Um, okay, so I've uh, you know, been a part of women's football in Iran since day one, and I have yet to see a youth league or even grassroots league to start. They just have, you know, some fun tournaments for a couple of days, and that is that. But how are we essentially supposed to develop a, a strong foundation that will help um, filter, you know, talented players to the senior national team. It's very difficult because all of a sudden you have players at the age of 15, 16 uh, joining the national team. And here we are having to start from the beginning of teaching them the basic fundamentals of football. But if you were to teach that and, um, you know, input this information and education of football in their head from a very young age, we won't have to keep looking back to basics uh, whenever they are playing at, you know, under 19 and senior national team. I think if they're going to start spending money, at least spend it on, you know, building that league from grassroots level. So there's, you know, a couple of times training a week and a game on the weekend. So we don't have to sit there and teach them, you know, uh, what, what does it mean? What does this formation mean? Or what does um, building out from the back mean? Or how are you able to, you know, come out from under pressure? Uh, I, mean, I cannot stress this enough. We need to start investing in the youth. Yes, of course, I agree with that. I mean, uh, it really um, matters, the, the the academies matter and how we develop the players. But also, um, um, from again, from my interview with Fatima, uh, the condition of the camps and also how they prepare the from from their lunch and dinner and uh, the whole uh, camp environment uh, that I think needs some um, development and needs to um, be uh, get improved as well. Yeah, I mean, look, we've interviewed a, a few players now from the national team, such as Yasaman Farmoni, who is also going to be in this squad. You know, obviously, one of the most important players. Um, we we have very talented players. There's no doubt about that. The the issue isn't so much that are we producing players because I think we are producing players it's just a case of are they in the right environment uh, to develop uh, and that's that the quick the answer to that is no, no no they're not they're not in the right environment it has to be, be it has to be a lot better we have to expect more from them you know it's the same with the men's football not the national team the men's national team is is good there's good players but there's so much more that they can do so the federation uh, us, as us as national team fans, whether it's men or women's uh, football, have to expect more from the federation. Um, and they have to expect more from themselves, which is the reality of the situation, but they don't do that. So, you know, you, you can't really, you can't, you can't really say much. It's, it's, just, it's just the unfortunate truth. Um, okay, let's go to some Twitter questions that we got. Um, first one comes from Kurush Zahed Nia. Uh, at Hachamanesh 1378 he asks uh, how good is a national team compared to the others in the group 
So we will definitely be the underdogs of this um, group, but that doesn't mean that we don't have a fighting chance. Um, I think depending on what, uh, uh, what the objectives of that game are, and uh, depending on what Coach Iran Dus and Coach Shahbazi do, it's really important to you know have a, um, in my opinion, block style defending and uh, to have, uh, you know, to be able to, especially with India, because their wingers are very strong, we, but our strengths also lie in the middle. So we are able to, um, you know, work on our counter attacks and working on, um, you know, attacking chances through the middle. Uh, other than that, I think what is the most important is, uh, I've said this a few times before, is that uh, our mental state before a game, uh, the girls should not uh, should not overly stress out. A little stress is always good, but not to be overboard with it. And uh, you know, overall, I think we do have a fighting chance, and it all kind of starts with our very first game versus India. If we're able to come out of that successfully, the momentum will continue throughout the entire tournament. Any predictions, sir? Um, with this uh, Thursday game, I'm, I, I'm never good. I mean, I think previously on your podcast, I I never did like uh, um, predictions or anything. But again, <laughs> um, um, compared to uh, uh, obviously China and China is like 19th in FIFA ranking and uh, uh, India is 50th. We were the last. We were over 70th. And uh, we have young players, like 17. Negin is like 17, 18. And... Um, and they're very, you know, excited. They are very motivated. First time being in a huge tournament like this. Um, as Cad uh, mentioned, if we come out of this game with good results, I mean, either a draw or not, 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 to, not conceding a lot of goals, I think it would be a good start for the team uh, to do uh, well, at least against a Chinese Taipei. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, last question on Twitter comes from Kai at Kai2004. He asked, how far do you think the women's team will go in this cup, realistically? Well, I mean, we have to, <laughs> we have to honestly be very honest and transparent with it. The Iran national team did not have a good program when it comes to the friendly matches being uh, scheduled in. And that's uh, whereas all the other teams had uh, great preparation. I, for me, I want them to just play good, do not concede a lot of goals, and to prove to themselves that in the future they do have the ability to um, to advance in the rankings. Um, I am hopeful that they will not be uh, in last place in this group, and uh, I think we do have a fighting chance between um, second and third in, in the group stage. Where do you think we'll finish that? Um, I would say third. Well, look, if the if the, the preparation was good, I would have probably said, uh, you know, we have we've got a chance to qualify for the next round. But you know, why should this team go to a tournament with no friendlies? Why? Why should why should that be the case? Like I don't understand. Uh, it, to me, it's a it's ludicrous that that's even happened. That team that's preparing for a uh, you know, an, an inter, a continental competition is going with no preparation. That is ridiculous, but it's just the way it is. So, yeah, I've got to say it would be it would difficult, but, you know, hopefully they come through with some positive, um, you know, successes in the, in the matches. Okay, um, guys, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I really appreciate everyone giving their, their thoughts on, on this um, competition, on Iran in the 2022 Women's Asian Cup. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, we can come back after the game against India, having maybe won the game, and then and speak about that. But yeah, I appreciate uh, Kat and Sahar's time again. Thank you for having me. Lovely speaking with you, Sahar, too. Same here. Thank you, Aria. Thanks, Kat. Excellent. Okay, so just to finish off, just going to give you some um, ways to watch the tournament. If you're living in the United States, you can watch on Paramount Plus. If you're living in Australia, you can watch on Network 10. If you're living in the UK or Ireland, you can watch on Free Sports. So I believe that's part of the Premier Sports package. Uh, and then you can watch it on, on CBS if you're living in Canada. If you're living in Europe, I don't know um, if they're actually going to stream it yet. But I believe you can still find a stream um, for the matches, uh, whether it's on YouTube or, or on different, uh, different websites. And then if you're like, actually living in India, you can watch it on the Eurosport channel in India. So um, we'll, we'll try and find links for that and then post on our Twitter. 
uh, when we do. Um, thanks again for listening. We'll be back after the, the match against India. We'll also have our podcast uh, before the Iraq match, which is going to be played uh, later this month. But for now, appreciate everyone's time and see you next time. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ali Golizadeh and you are listening to Golbazan Podcast.